I admit it, I got one of these, but that's all right. It's cool. It's Batman. What's up, guys? I'm Adam Saxon, a.k.a. Guy in a Cube, and I've got a roundup for this week, so let's dig in. First up is a blog post from Chris Webb where he looks at an item that I completely agree is not really well known. People don't really understand it. It's privacy levels inside of Power BI and Power Query or the get and transform inside of Excel. This is where you set a privacy level for your data sources and it can either be public, private, organization, or none. And depending on how you set it will depend on how these data sources interact with each other. The idea is that you can't merge them together. So his blog post, it looks like he's gonna have a series and the first one is regards to performance. And I like this because he talks about what happens when you do certain things and from Power BI Desktop's perspective, you will potentially negate the functionality of query folding when the query ends up doing what it's doing with an M syntax. And that's just to make sure that data is not mashing together. So I look forward to his other posts in this series. It's a topic that I kind of have an interest in, so I'm excited about that. So if you're not sure where privacy levels are or you're interested just to know like what effect they have in your environment, be sure to check out this blog post and look for his other posts in the series. Next up is a blog post from Brett Powell where he talks about his feature matrix for analysis services, both multidimensional and tabular. And he talks about the fact that this is updated with CTP 2.1 of SQL Server 2017. So if you're curious about what features are available in which versions and where they come into play, this is a great thing for you to go look at. He's got some slides that you can download as well as a Word document that lists out all the differences from these two items across versions. Melissa Coates has a great blog post on how to reuse data sets that have already been published to Power BI. And what I really like about this blog post is she covers the three main ways that you can do that. And I like it so much that we may take that for the official documentation as well. I don't know, I'll need to pass it on. So, but she looks at the ability to reuse reports directly inside of the Power BI service. So you can just with a data set that's there, you can just create a new report. She also looks at using Analyze in Excel to connect to the service and use those items, as well as using the new Power BI Live connection inside of Power BI Desktop, which is a preview feature that you can enable in the latest build of Power BI Desktop. So if you're curious how to reuse existing data sets in the service, be sure to check out this blog post. All right, this next blog post is, ooh, I knew that was coming. If you didn't notice, I didn't have a roundup last week and that's because of due to travel and all the stuff that's coming that I've got to document. So I'm pulling an item from last week into this week and that is the announcement of Power BI Report Server. And basically what this is, is take everything that was great in reporting services, add in Power BI Reports on premises, put them together and it's awesome. This is the on-premises server that allows you to host Power BI Reports. What more do I have to say? Ricardo's got some blog posts out there which go into details about what to expect, kind of timing, some licensing information. Also, we have released all the documentation or the initial set of documentation up on powerbi.com for the report server on how to install it. And if you didn't notice, I had a video on Tuesday which talked about how to install the Power BI report server May 2017 preview as well. So you can go check that out. So if you're interested in Power BI reports on premises, be, to sh be sure to check out these blog posts, check out the video, and check out the documentation. And let me know what you think about it. Another item I'm gonna pull from last week is the announcement of CTP 2.1 of Analysis Services 2017. And in this release, there were a couple of really cool things. First up was the ability to see shared M queries from the Tabular Model Explorer. That's pretty cool. So if you have share, if you have M queries that you're sharing inside of the model, you can see all of those and then query use the query editor to edit those. Next up were a couple of improvements for DMVs or data management views inside of analysis services. Go check out the blog post to see the details on those. And the item that I actually got the most excited about in this announcement is the ability to open up MS DAX files. So files that have an extension of MS DAX that basically you have a DAX statement inside of this file. You can open that inside of SSDT without having an actual model in place. So basically it's a DAX editor for just text files. 
So you can have a text file with some DAX, open it up in the query editor and get IntelliSense on those DAX statements. That's pretty neat. And the last thing that was mentioned was the ability to set encoding hints inside of the SSDT property window. And encoding hints really are a, a way for you to optimize processing or data refresh for large in-memory models. So that may be something that you're interested in if you're dealing with a very large model. Okay guys, let me know which item you were most excited about. You can do that down in the comments below. Also in the description below, you'll see links for all the items I talked about, along with some bonus links just for you. If you like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button or you can smash it if you like. If it's your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great content from both Patrick and myself or maybe a few guests. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.